Hi, this is Tom from Rockland Web Design. Hopefully you've been watching our video series on how you as a business owner or a professional can create a more effective web presence for your company. Um, we're doing a four-part series. Uh, the first video kind of explained the three most essential elements of creating an effective web presence. Uh, the one that we did a few weeks back was talking about the quality content that you should be putting on your website, do-it-yourself articles, testimonials, things that will really keep people on the website and learning more about your company and setting yourself up as an expert in your industry. Today we're going to talk a little bit about social media. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the techniques on how to post to all these different websites because we'll be here until midnight of 2017. Uh, but I will talk with you about the most essential elements of what to post and why. All right? So just really Captain Obvious, first of all, these are the three places that you should be posting to, especially depending upon your industry. You have your Facebook, your LinkedIn, and your Twitter social media platforms. You as a business owner should have all three. All right? In all likeliness, the most prominent one that you're going to be posting to is Facebook. All right. If you're, you know, uh, a, a professional, an accredited professional, you might also be posting significantly to LinkedIn because it is more of a business-to-business -business platform. Uh, and Twitter, it's more for entertainment, uh, you know, uh, sending out messages about entertainment and news. So it might or might not be relevant to your industry, but it's still good to have all three of these different platforms available, hey, maybe Twitter will take off significantly and that's the place to go. So you want to have them ready. Now let's talk about philosophy for a minute. I mentioned a while back in a previous video, I only had, in 2008, when, uh, 2007, I only had about $300 in my pocket in order to start my company. All right? So obviously I built a nice website and I was looking to promote it. And right around that time, Facebook was taking off. It was becoming a really popular platform for friends and colleagues to connect with each other. So I started posting on there. All right? Now back then I just basically said, hey, if you need a website, call Rockland Web Design. Pretty Captain Obvious, very easy to remember, and just please contact us. Uh, thank God that was a great strategy because people saw us, nobody else was doing it at that point, uh, and we got a, a decent amount of business from it. Fast forward about uh, seven or eight years, and that's not the case anymore. Because Facebook now has 1.4 billion users. So to cut through the noise of all the different things that are being posted, you need a more refined strategy. So I'm going to show you a strategy that, in my opinion, I think comes from the heart, but also has a little bit of intellect involved here so that you know what you can effectively post and get some sort of a return on your time investment. I'd like you to remember this acronym. I care. I care stands for information, and that means handing information out there to people that would benefit them. So for instance, if you're an accountant and there's a change to the IRS tax code, you might want to post a link to a news article that's relevant to consumers or business owners that might need to know about this information. In other words, you're keeping up on your industry and you're also helping your customers keep up on, their, uh, on your industry as well so that you can help them when the time comes if they need your services. All right? Two is concern. Now, there's an, a wonderful saying, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. There are many people that uh, will post that they had an unfortunate incident. You know, sometimes a death in the family, uh, sometimes maybe a, a loss in some way, shape, or form. Uh, you, as a person that I'm sure would want to hear some words of concern, should also take some time each day to show concern for your audience, the people that are going through tough times. Maybe give them a message of hope. Let them know that you're, if you're a prayerful person, that you're praying for them, or at least that they're in your thoughts. All right? So that's concern. The third is approbation, which is the, the flip side of it. But, um, you know, if somebody has a birthday coming up, uh, if uh, somebody uh, just got a promotion or they got married or maybe if they got divorced and they got away from their uh, formerly significant other, that was an awful joke. But the point is, is that you want to congratulate them for the things that, they, uh, that they're happy about in their lives. All right? The fourth is resources. 
that this is kind of related to the information thing, but perhaps you have some colleagues in your industry or some information in a certain location that you can provide to people that are asking certain questions. For instance, if somebody is asking out on social media, let's say Facebook is an example, where would I find a good car service? Well, you can uh, write in that uh, this is a wonderful car service, uh, that you've been driven uh, via limousine uh, to LaGuardia or JFK Airport, uh, and you recommend this particular service, and that will help them. Now, if you notice here, I got some statistics, 80% of 20, I'm sure you've heard of the 80-20 rule, which basically says that 80% of your time is wasted, and 20% of your time is what's going to be most profitable, what's going to benefit you, return on investment, so on and so forth. All right? Here's the 20%, and I call it events. Now, events is a wide swap. It's not just about those in-person events, such as workshops. Uh, you know, uh, wine and cheese parties, uh, events at local taverns or restaurants. Those are events, but also an event such as a sale that has a finite timeline to it. Maybe you are offering a sale from your company that you want to mention to your audience. We have a client, uh, business machines and uh, multifunction printers, that they consistently put out flyers and ads talking about the different services uh, that are being discounted from that particular MFP company. All right, so putting out sales, coupons, anything that you're offering for free, almost like a resource. But the point is, is these are items that are going to benefit your audience, but will also benefit you as the business owner because now you're going to start having people come back to your website. You're creating links for these different events to come back to your website and see everything that you have to offer on your web presence. Now, I mentioned about the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your time, they say, is wasted. I don't agree with that, okay? You might you know, be a little scattered, and that's fine, but if you did not do, if you stay within the constraints of this formula, if you allocate 80% of your time to show people that you care about your audience by providing them all of this information, concern, approbation and resources for your audience, then when the time comes that you are going to share with them an event that's coming up, a workshop that you're going to perform, a sale on a product or service that you have within your company, a coupon, or even something free, they are going to remember you. And over time, the moment that they need a service that's related to your industry, guess who they're going to think about first? A couple of other small pieces of advice when you're doing this, you should post consistently on a daily basis. I'm not talking about spending two or three hours on any one of these platforms. I'm talking about spending a consistent 15 minutes a day posting one to two articles or one to two items related to any of these five pieces that I'm talking about. Um, you could do it at 8 o'clock in the morning, set it and forget it. But remember to go back maybe in the afternoon around 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock and see if anybody commented back on this. You should also go up and down your newsfeed and see if there's anything relevant that you wanted to communicate with your audience, such as showing concern and approbation, which I find is the most important. Um, the best days and times to post is 8 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning, the best, best time, in my opinion, is 1 o'clock in the afternoon. There are some stats on the web to prove this. And approximately 5 o'clock in the afternoon, everybody's winding down from work. But that 1 o'clock spot is really important because people are coming back from lunch, typically. They're not completely zoned in on their work at the moment. So they will do something just a little bit uh, you know, more enjoyable or entertaining. They'll go on Facebook or they'll go on LinkedIn to connect with an audience or they'll look at their Twitter feed. I think that that's the best time to post. Um, what are other things that I can mention? Um, try to think local. Try to think of your local community, especially if you're a small business. Wait on the delusions or the illusions of that you're going to conquer the world. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful thing, and if your business takes off, God bless you, all right? But there is so much business opportunity in your local community, and your Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter friends in your local community can become your raving fans if you do show concern and approbation and provide resources and information. So uh, without going too much more in detail, because I don't want to overdo it, 
Just remember the eye care formula. Remember the best times to post and comment on other posts is 8 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, that's the, in my opinion, the most important, and 5 o'clock in the afternoon when people are starting to wind down from work. Uh, think locally, try to think of your local target audience and stay in touch with them because they'll appreciate it and again, ultimately, you will be the expert in your industry that they'll remember when they need your product or service. So that's all for now. I hope you tune in for our third uh, in the installment of this series is how to write an effective newsletter that uh, you send out to your audience of raving fans. Until then, thanks a lot and we hope to see you again.